Hey everybody, and welcome to a new video. If you're a Lightroom user, you may be surprised at how many tricks and features it has that you may have never heard of. For example, did you know it has a dust spot finder? Sure it does. In this video, I'll show you how to use that and a number of other features that are super useful in Lightroom that help me create images like this and this. Don't forget to stay for my bonus tip, where I show you how I go through the culling of a few thousand photos for my full day of wildlife photography in less than 10 minutes. My name is Simon Dantremont, and I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for nature and wildlife photography. Subscribe if you want to see more. Okay, let's jump into this. I'm using Lightroom Classic version 12.5. Hidden feature number one is the targeted adjustment tool. This is found in the panel to adjust colors called the HSL color panel. In there, you can pick individual colors and adjust the saturation and luminance one color at a time. A great feature, like adjusting the green tones in this deer photo. Handy for color adjustments. But here's the best part. Let's say I want to adjust the saturation or brightness of these out of focus grasses in the foreground in this deer photo of mine. But what color are they? You don't need to know. Just click on this tool right here. Then all you need to do is click on the part of the image you want to adjust and while holding down the mouse button, slide up for more and down for less and it will adjust the combination of colors needed to adjust where you selected. So if I want to adjust these grasses, turns out they're mostly yellow with a bit of orange. With saturation selected, up for more saturation and down for less. With luminance selected, up for brighter, down for darker. I find that the face of this deer in the shade looks too blue. Hit saturation, click on the adjustment tool and then click on the face and slide down. Done. If you like using the tone curve, the same tool is over there too. What's your favorite hidden feature in Lightroom? If I haven't mentioned it in my video, please put it in the comments below. My viewers would love to see it, as would I. One great feature that's not as well known as it should be is the very smart masking feature in the details panel used for sharpening and noise reduction. A super important principle in handling noise is don't make it worse by sharpening it. That's because adding sharpening, clarity or detail to your noise just exacerbates it and in your featureless background is often where the noise looks the worst. So the trick here is how do we sharpen the subject where detail is important without sharpening the background where noise will just be made more visible? Ah, there's a trick for that. In the sharpening controls, hit the Alt key, option on a Mac, and slide the masking slider. Areas with details and features, usually your subject, will be in white and will have the sharpening applied. Featureless and out of focus areas will show in black and have no sharpening applied. See in this snowy owl photo of mine how I can get the mask to select the owl and in focus areas over the background. Just slide back and forth until your subject is white, background black, in the right balance. Then apply sharpening using the amount slider in the amount that looks good to you. It will only be applied to areas in white. While I've got you starting to use that Alt key, option on a Mac, let's find another use for it. Here's a bald eagle photo of mine, which I often underexpose as the whites of that head can be very bright compared to the dark body and really easy to blow out. That is overexposed to pure white, which doesn't make for a great photo. As such, they often need fine tuning in the whites and darks to get just right. Here's a couple of tricks for you. While adjusting your sliders in the basic panel for highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, the histogram above will show you which tone you're adjusting when you select it. Highlights adjust the tones here, but whites and even brighter tones over here. Secondly, if you hold on to the Alt key, option on a Mac, while you slide the whites and blacks, the appearance of colors or tones will tell you when you've clipped those tones, meaning crushed the blacks into pure black or blown the whites into pure white. Unless you're doing this purposefully for an artistic reason, you should avoid this clipping. So here I have the room to raise the whites a little bit and make the head and tail a little bit brighter, but this tool will tell me when I've done too much and I can back off to preserve some of the details there. One technique that people use to maximize the range of tones in the image is to lift the whites to just before clipping and lower the darks again to just before clipping. That way you maximize the dynamic range available to you. By the way, I should mention that if you sign up to my email list, I'll send you a free guide on shooting in backlit situations, which includes processing tips to help you get photos like this and this. 
I'll leave a link in the show notes below. In my intro, I pointed out that Lightroom has a little known dust spot detection feature. While in the develop module, click on the healing icon and then look down on the lower left and there's a tick box called visualize spots and a slider that makes a mask similar to what we saw earlier. The great thing about this one is that against a sky or a clean background, spots stand out like a sore thumb, especially with wide angle lenses and small apertures. Now it's not by coincidence that this feature is within the healing panel. That's because the tools to fix it are here too. Zoom up on your dust spots, which you can do by pressing space and click on the area you want to zoom into. And in healing mode and with a very small brush size, barely bigger than the spots, just click on the spots. Voila, they're gone. Do you struggle with getting your horizon straight in your photos? This one is quick and easy. When using the crop tool next to the word angle, right here is the straighten horizon tool. It's really easy to use. Just click on the tool, then go over to your image and click and while holding down the left mouse key, drag along your horizon to another point on the horizon. The farther you can go, the more accurate this will be. And voila, when you release the mouse key, the photo snaps to a level horizon, easy. By the way, if you like wildlife photography like I do and are early to intermediate in your photography journey, check out my wildlife photography course with over five hours of video content in 20 modules. I go over equipment, settings, how to capture fast action and birds in flight, understanding light, how to focus on subjects, and two modules on wildlife image processing. I even have three modules where I go into the field and I show you how to get my pics in real time. I'll leave a link in the show notes below where you can watch the first module which goes over everything covered in the course. There's even a chance to win a 600 millimeter F4 lens of your choice if you sign up soon. That's because we're gonna have a photo contest for the first 500 participants. There's only a few spots left, so sign up soon. For the next tip, a quick one here, a couple of one-click shortcuts you have to have in your arsenal. While you're in the masking area, like you want to paint using the brush tool or have an adjustment overlay like a radial filter, hit O to reveal your mask so you can see where your effect will be active. Hit O again to hide it. And when you're in the develop module and you want to know what your progress and your processing has been like, there's nothing better than to compare it to the original. Hit Y on your keyboard for the before and after. Hit it again to go back to processing. One of the most powerful features in Lightroom is creating panoramas. Most people think you need Photoshop for this. You shoot a series of photos using a tripod that's level and make sure you have plenty of overlap between the images so Lightroom can stitch them together. Like me taking a wide panorama of this Milky Way over a barn. I started way over to the right and took eight images, starting farther right than I needed and finishing farther left than I needed, as you sometimes lose the edges in the stitching. Then you select the first photo in the series, hold down shift, then click on the last photo in the series. They should all be selected and highlighted in a gray frame. Then right click on them, go to photo merge, Panorama. The sky is curved, so in my case, the final panorama has some distortions. You can crop your photo from the new merged photo or hit auto crop for Lightroom to do it. Then I process my photos to taste and voila, here's the final product all in Lightroom. And I promised you a bonus tip. And that's how I do the culling of a thousand, two thousand or three thousand photos from one outing all in minutes. First, one trick is Lightroom needs to make a JPEG preview of your raw photo before it can show it on your screen. If you need to wait the second it takes to make the preview from every one of your thousands of photos, it really slows you down. The good news is your camera already made a JPEG preview of your raw file in camera so you could see it on the back LCD. You can download this JPEG along with your raw photos for your computer to use in culling. When importing in build previews, select embedded and sidecar. Secondly, turn on the auto advance feature. You can find this under photo, auto advance. Then all you need to do is hit X on your keyboard to reject a photo, P to pick. X, 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 P, X, 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 P. Then photo, delete rejected photos to delete the ones you rejected. It's super quick. If you found this video on Lightroom valuable, check out my other recent video on Lightroom where I shared my top three favorite techniques. You can see it right here. If you found this video deserving, give it a like and YouTube will show it to even more photographers, helping them advance in their photography journeys, hopefully like I've helped you with yours. 
I hope you can use this the next time you come home with photos, helping you take your processing to a whole new level. I know you can do it.